Could you do that again? I want to get a picture of it. You bet. Sure. Get a picture. It'll be in today in the Mara magazine in a couple of weeks, I hope. Hey, Charlie, you better get up there. You'll follow this next number, you know. Huh? Say, how do you know so much about music? Before I was born, my mother was frightened by a tooth box, but it didn't affect me, affect me, affect me, affect me, affect me, affect me. Come on, Charlie, hurry up, get going. Gee, how many times do I have to tell you my name is not Charlie, it's Dennis? How do you spell it? Wait a minute, I gotta hear my driver's license. Never mind, never mind. You better get up there, Charlie. That good will beat your brains out with a liquor stick. Thank you, thank you very much. Oh, boy, okay. Hello, BG. Am I late? Where'd you get lost? Oh, I was out helping Jerry Hendricks take pictures. Well, do you want to be a singer or you want to be a camera nut? I'm ambitious. I want to be a camera nut. Well, plant yourself over here for a couple of minutes, will you? I'm sorry, BG. Well, Dr. Goodman, give me some of that good skin. Now make me know it. Now show it. Now blow it. Now stow it. How about grabbing a picture you and the boys, Benny? Well, so, go right ahead, Jimmy. Well, hit me that good pose, will you? What, well, number two? What else? What Hello, else? boys. Wait a minute, I'll get a couple of those bugs down here in the foreground. Hey, Charlie, dance the young lady right in here, will you? Make a little atmosphere for me. That's it. You all set? Hit that pose. Oh, that's swell. Thanks very much, kids. Thank you very much. Thanks, boys. Thanks, Benny. Hey, Jerry, what's this one for? This is for today and tomorrow goes to the state fair. Well, I'll see you all around sometime if you're not sitting down. Give me a ring when you get back to New York, Dennis. Hey, wait a minute. I'll go with you. Hey, take it easy, son. You're working here. Oh, but look, B.G., if I'm going to be a hot news photographer like Jerry, You I... wait. Just preset that chair. No. We will now hear from contestant number four on your program. The students from the Abbotsville High School, under the leadership of their teacher, Miss Ellen Evans. So gently, sweet Afton, among thy green graves, so gently, Evans. <laughs> a school teacher, Miss Evans, has certain moral responsibilities. While I'm sure we all completely believe what you tell us about this matter, we nevertheless feel that, in the interest of all concerned, the situation demands... Uh... Uh, come to the point, Purdy. Yes, tell her exactly what we think. Yes, go ahead, Mr. Purdy, tell me. Well, Miss Evans, 
We want to be understanding. We understand, all right. You might have picked more genteel company than the town drunkard for this, this debauch. Please, ladies and gentlemen. It's all right, Mr. Purdy. I can handle this. My dear members of the school board, please put your narrow little minds completely at rest. I assure you I wouldn't think of staying here. I'll say you won't, because you're fired. Thank you, Mr. Bolton. That's just like you. The few months I've spent here in your charming midst has endeared you all to me very much. I wouldn't dream of staying here and contaminating your sweet souls. Someone's at the door. Why don't you get it? Hi, Helen! Well, darling, what happened? Did the school burn down? Not exactly. Oh, well, come on in. What's all this? Oh, they're just practicing no aid. Kids, this is maybe Sister Ellen. This is Googie. Oh, and uh, this is Nancy. Oh, it's all right. How do you do? Well, careful of splinters. Come on, tell me, darling, what happened? Why didn't you send me a what? Well, so many things happen, and... You in a jam? Sort of. A man? N not exactly. What do you mean? Not exactly, or not exactly a man? Well, uh... Come on, tell me. Well, Kay, it's a long story. I took my class to the fair for a singing contest. It was raining. I came out of the tent to go across the street, and... When you what? Well, that's when I slipped and fell in the mud. Honest, Kay, that's the truth about the picture. What picture? That's that silly. <laughs> How long did it take you to get that beautiful glow? <laughs> What's so funny? We're only kidding, honey. You mean they took this picture without your knowing it, without your consent? You didn't sign a release? Well, it's true, Kay. I didn't even know when the picture was being snapped. But that's why I came to New York, to demand a public retraction and apology. And then I'm going back to that... No release and without your permission. Why, they can't do that to my baby sister? We'll sue them. Oh, no, Kay, I don't want to sue them. Well, it probably isn't the fault of the magazine itself anyway. It's... It was no, just a... no, just relax, darling, and leave everything to me, huh? I think we've hit the check. I want to see the editor. You'll have to talk to Mr. Gallister. Thank you. I'll give him your message, Mr. President. Yes? I want to see the editor. In reference to what, please? This. That girl, madam, is my very innocent little baby sister. This picture, taken without her knowledge and published without her consent, has caused her to lose her job, be shunned by our friends, and has also ruined our families and particularly my reputation. Do I make myself clear? Uh, very clear, Miss uh... Evans. Thank you. Let me see now. Uh... I think you'd better see Mr. Hendricks. He's had a great deal of experience with complaints of this nature. He's, uh, he's tied up right now. Thank you. I'll wait. Oh, yes, of course. I'm sure Mr. Hendricks wouldn't want to miss you. But won't you have a seat? Tell him he's in trouble again. Oh, where is he? You know where he is. He spends most of his life in there. Oh. I would like to see Mr. Wilson. He's busy right now. You'll have to wait. Thank you. Hiya, Charlie. What's up? What's up? Oh, that old thing. It's not a bad picture, is it? Kind of dark, though. It was a little cloudy that day. 
the boss thinks you got a release for that picture. Oh, now, Charlie, you wouldn't want me to stand out there in the rain, get ringing wet just to get a girl's autograph. Besides, how do I know? Maybe the dame couldn't write. Why? That's her sister. Oh, yeah? Say, she's kind of cute, too, isn't she? What's wrong with her? Is she nervous? Say, listen, the boss thinks you have a release for that picture, and when he finds out you haven't, he might not feel like writing you a letter of recommendation for your commission. Wait a minute, Charlie. You mean to tell me he hasn't written that thing yet? No, he hasn't. Well, why didn't you get him to do... Holy smokes, Charlie, here she comes. Look, you entertain her, see? Tell her, tell her something. Entertain her, sell her subscription. I gotta think of something to do. Am I going to see someone here, or am I going to see my attorney? What Thank goes you. On Thank here? you very, very much, Mr. Pitt. Pitt. Then you'll take care of that little matter for me, huh? Oh, Mr. Hendricks. Yes, Miss McAllister? This is Miss Evans. She wants to see you on a matter of grave importance. Well, how do you do? Mr. Hendricks, did you take this picture? Dear young lady. Well, Mr. Vice President, your magazine has ruined the life of an innocent girl, my sister, and I demand restitution. They did? I mean, we did? Yes, you did. Well, let me tell you, Miss Evans, you've come to the right person. Good. Let's go in your office and talk about oh, it. Oh, no, no, I forgot to tell you. We can't go in there. I'm having my desk painted today. Miss Evans, would you mind telling me where did you ever get that perfectly lovely suit? Oh, uh, oh, do you like this? Yes, I do. Mr. Hendricks. I didn't come here to talk about clothes. Uh, no, no, of course not. Now, let's see if we can't figure out some quiet place where we can discuss this and get away from all this hub and bub. Uh, uh, how about a bite of lunch? I'm not hungry. I'm angry. Uh, 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 my dear young lady, one thing at a time. My, what a perfectly lovely pin you Mr. have. Mr. Hendricks, I demand something be done. Shh. Yes, indeed, and you're quite right. Something should be done. Something's got to be done. Of course, Miss Evans, I'm not entirely familiar with your problem, but I'm sure that we can settle it without coming to blows. <laughs> uh, oh, Miss Evans, there's a little matter that I forgot. Would you mind sitting right here and waiting for me for just a second? Miss McAllister, Miss Evans and I are going out to lunch. If Mr. Belknap calls, you tell him... Look, Charlie, honey, on account of we love each other so much, how about letting me find out as the weather clears, huh? The weather hasn't cleared since that last five bucks. Oh, Charlie, don't bring it up now. We're not going to buy the girl some lunch on the spot. Are you a writer? No. I'm a poet. How about a buck? No. Could you let me have six bits? Uh -uh. All right, I'll settle for half a dollar. I've only got a quarter for my own lunch. Holy oh, smokes. <clears throat> well, Miss McAllister, remind me to see that you get that bonus. Shall we be off, Miss Evans? Yeah. Uh, where shall we eat? Oh, anywhere you say. Anywhere I say. <laughs> well, Miss Evans, it's certainly good to meet a nice, sensible young lady like you. Now, where shall we go for this lunch? There's a dandy little sandwich shop just around the corner. We'll go to the 42 Club. The 42 Club? Well, uh, I, I don't see how we... Uh, uh, the 40, you said the 42 Club? Uh, would you mind stopping in at the 400 Club on the way for just a minute? They don't serve lunch there. Oh, no, I know they don't. But you see, I'm having a party there tonight for some of my friends, and I want to stop and see if the champagne is cold and the tables are all set up properly. Only take us a second. Well, all right. But we're going to the 42 Club for lunch. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, of course. We've got to go to the 42 Club.
right, boys, let's get back to the stand. Evans, I'll be with you in just a moment. Well, Dr. Goodman, I'm glad to see that you and the boys are getting all set from a party tonight. What party? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, that's fine. Give me some of that good skin. Put it in your pocket and lock it. Mm -hmm. Oh, incidentally, I want you to meet a little friend of mine. Miss Evans, uh, this is Benny Goodman. Benny Goodman, this is Miss Evans. And these are Mr. Goodman's boys. Hello. Say, Benji, can you tell me where I can find a Brooklyn thrush? Oh, Dennis? Yeah. Oh, he's around here someplace trying to photograph himself. Well, you carry right on and I'll be back. Now, hold still, boys. What's the matter? Are you nervous or something? Don't move that mop. Not a muscle. It's very pretty. Very pretty indeed. Jerry! Say, do you really like it? I think it's beautiful. What are you going to call it? Oh, I'm going to call it after the ball. Say, Jerry, what would you shoot it at? Sunrise. Hey, Charlie, you want to know something? It's a lucky thing for you that I dropped in just now like I did. If you're going to shoot big stuff like this, you ought to have one of those new hemohymodine lenses. You know, the kind with a half stigmat and the Lurch Peristyle attachment. Oh, I think I've got one of those. Oh, already. no, no, Charlie, you couldn't have one of those. You might have one of the old kind, the kind they made before, but you haven't got one of the new kind, the kind they made after. What do you know about that? What a coincidence. <laughs> I happen to have one in my pocket just now. Look that over. I can arrange to let you purchase that from me for the small sum of $28. Are you sure this is the one they made after? Well, positively. Well, I don't want to hold you up here now that you're all set. If you just give me the money, I'll be on the way. Well, I haven't got that much money with me. Well, how much have you got? Well, about 11 bucks. Well, that'll do fine. I'll take that for the time being, so I'll be able to remind myself that you still owe me $17, you see? Oh, fine. Well, I'll see you around, Charlie. Oh, wait a minute, Jerry. Before you go, I wonder if I could borrow a dollar from you for lunch. I beg pardon? I wonder if I could borrow a dollar from you for lunch. Gee, you caught me at an awful bad time. As a matter of fact, I'm just on my way down to my bank right now. Any other time, I'd be tickled to death too, Charlie. Glad to, you know that. Well, so long, Charlie. So long, Jerry. Gee, he's a wonderful fella. Well, should we try it again, fellas? I want to try out this new lens. Well, Miss Evans? Shall we go to the 42 Club and have lunch? Yes, let's. Well, now, of course, Miss Evans, the fault lies entirely with the photographer, not with the magazine. I don't care whose fault it is. The magazine is going to pay and pay plenty. But my sister and I aren't going to waste our young lives waiting around. We want action now. Naturally. Uh, what, what sort of action did you have in mind? Uh, have you ever been in Craig's Bargain Basement? No, I haven't. Uh, did I miss anything? No, you're lucky. I work there, modeling 498 dresses all day long. And I'm sick of them. I want to do things, go places, be somebody. Well, that's a very commendable ambition, very commendable. Now, uh, as I see it, this is my big chance. If I win this suit against your magazine, and I intend to win it, I, I'll have enough money to, to live decently, to dress decently, to, to go to places that can't be seen by people who count, and after that point, getting to be a Powers girl will just be... Wait a minute, Miss Evans. Did you say Powers girl? Do you want to become a Powers girl? Why, more than anything. Well, my dear young lady, why didn't you say that in the first place? John Powers happens to be one of my nearest and dearest friends. He is? John Z. Boy Powers? <laughs> why, one little phone call, my dear, and you're in. But do you really know him that well? I know him better than that. You will not only be a Powers girl, you will be the Powers girl. Oh, Mr. Hendricks. I, I, I'm so excited. I, I can't eat another bite. <laughs> Oh, that's very cute. I'm sorry I didn't get you excited an hour ago. Uh, <clears throat> waiter, my check, please. Well, shall we be on our way? Uh, uh, to the John Powers office? No, up to see your sister. My sister? Well, sure, we want to get that little release signed, don't we? Oh, no, I, I mean, uh, well, I'll get it signed and bring it up to the office oh, for you. Oh, no, that's very sweet, but I wouldn't put you to that trouble for anything oh, in the world. Oh, no trouble. Now, when you walk into John Powers' office, I want you to have not one thing on your mind except your career, your success, your happiness, the glamour of the... What's that? It's ten dollars and ninety cents. Ten dollars and ninety cents. <laughs> we nearly finished in a dead heat. I beg your pardon, sir. That's all right, Charlie. That's all for you. Thanks, sir. Thank you very much. Not at all. Not at all. Well, shall we be on our way? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you hurt yourself? 
Are you, are you sure you're all right? Yes, I, I was just putting up my good luck charm. Oh, I see. It didn't work very well, did it? Oh, uh, this is my sister Ellen, and this is Mr. Hendricks. How do you do? Glad to see you. Mr. Hendricks is the vice president of Today and Tomorrow magazine. He is? Mr. Hendricks, your magazine has done me an irreparable harm, and I don't intend to stand for it. Miss Evans, you are absolutely right. But let me tell you this. Your sister and I have talked this over. And we've reached an agreement that I'm sure is going to be very satisfactory to everybody concerned. Now, if you'll just sign this right here. Yes, go ahead and sign, Ellen. I'll explain it all to you later. Does this release promise that the magazine will publish an apology? Miss Evans, as vice president of Today and Tomorrow magazine, I can truthfully say, uh, well, that is, I, I can't... Uh, 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 do you mean to tell me you don't even trust your own sister, your own flesh and blood? Well, of course I do, but... Well, then go right ahead and sign, dear. I'm sorry, but I can't. Now, Miss Evans, you don't look like a stubborn girl to me. Well, I'm not stubborn, but if the magazine doesn't print the apology, well, then everyone in Abbotsville will still think I'm a... Oh, fiddle-faddle, Abbotsville. Who cares what they think in Abbotsville? This is the important thing. I think you're wonderful. I think you're the most beautiful girl I've ever seen. Uh, pardon me just a moment. Do you happen to have a picture of your mother handy? My mother? Yes, I'd like to see a picture of the woman who was fortunate enough to have two daughters as beautiful as you two. You see, before I met you, I thought your sister was prettier than you are. But now that I've seen you, well, you must allow me to apologize. That's all I can say. And I don't mean this to be derogatory in any sense at all. In fact, I mean to be quite flattering to everybody concerned. And you look so young, too, to be a school teacher. Thank you. I, I think you're rather young to be vice president of such a big magazine. Oh, yes, it did happen rather suddenly. I guess no one was more surprised than I was. I just turned around and there it was right on the door vice president as big as anything i've ever seen <laughs> now if you'll just sign right here no no oh, come on in no you, you don't want to sign it oh mr hendricks i think this is a matter for my sister and me to discuss privately oh i see you want to talk well i'll just leave the paper right there in case you should ch uh, Goodbye. Uh, not goodbye just good day i'll be seeing you later on and i'll leave this with you in case you might need it Oh, as it hurts. I'll come back later. Okay, but remember, no John Henry, no John Powers. Okay, just what did Mr. Hendricks mean when he said everything had been satisfactorily arranged? Well, if you hadn't been so stubborn, he would have told you. He had some wonderful plans for our future. Our future? Well, yes, you... <laughs> you see, he was so upset about that picture of you that... Instead of just an apology, he was going to repay you by making me a powers girl. Well, don't you see how much that would mean to us? You haven't changed, have you, Kay? No, oh, I'm... I'm sorry. I guess I was being selfish in a way. Forgive me. You see, it's... it's just that I've dreamed for so long of becoming a success in this town. I've worked so hard, and I... I've been so miserable. I just can't go on any longer, Ellen. I just can't. Well, I'm sorry, Kay, but why is meeting John Powers so important? But, darling, he's the head man in the modeling profession. All the top artists, advertisers, and commercial photographers go to him for their models. I meet Mr. Powers, and he accepts me. Why, there's no telling how far I could go. I could either become a famous motion picture star or, or marry a millionaire. Or... And that's what you really want, Kay. More than anything in the world. Will you help me? Well, Kay, if being a powers girl means so much to you, I'll sign the release. Oh, Ellen, you darling. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'll call Mr. Henry, by the way. Just wait till you meet Mr. Powers, the funniest guy in the world. Anything for a laugh. I hope he doesn't laugh me out of my opportunity. Why, dear young lady, I said funny, not silly. He'll see you right away, through the gate, room four. How to do? Say, did anyone ever tell you you should be in pictures? Yes, ten years ago. That's why I'm here now. Ah, uh -huh. well, let's not keep Mr. Powers waiting any longer. Just buzz me in, will you please? Just a minute. Whom shall I say is calling? Oh, it won't be necessary to announce me. I'm one of his oldest and dearest friends. He'll be tickled that to see old Jerry. There's a Jerry here to see you. He says he's a very close friend of yours. 
Thank you. I'm sorry, Mr. Power says he hasn't any close friend named Jerry. He said what? Are you kidding? <laughs> well, how do you like that? See what I was telling you? Always clowning, always kidding. <laughs> Very funny sense of humor. Oh, well. There must be some mistake, miss. Why, Mr. Hendricks and Mr. Powers are very good friends. If you'll tell me what you want to see Mr. Powers about, maybe I can help you. Oh, no, you don't. He's had his little joke. Now I'm going to have mine. Come on, Miss Evans. Let's have a seat right over here and wait while Mr. Powers finishes amusing himself. I wish you would save your personal jokes until after I've met him. Why, you're not worried about this, are you? Frankly, yes. I'd feel a lot better if the whole thing were over. Well, uh, maybe it'd be a good idea if we went home now and came back some other day. You see, I'm not even sure he's here. Well, of course he's here. Didn't you hear the receptionist talking to him? Oh, yes, that's right. She was, wasn't she? Talked to him on that thing over there. You know something, Charlie, Miss Evans? I think you're absolutely right. I'll handle the situation right now. Did my desk get over there? Who do you suppose could have moved it? Well, help me put it back. Yes, Mr. Powers? Yes. Hello there, Jerry. What are you doing here? Shh. I'll take care of it. Thank you. Yes? Oh, I met an alarm, but Mr. Powers wanted to see me. Oh, yes, he's expecting you. Will you wait, please? Here are Mr. Powers' appointments for the afternoon. Oh. Uh, do you know Mr. Hendricks? Jerry? <laughs> I'll say I know him. Intimately? What do you mean, intimately? Oh, I mean, no. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean, but you're all wrong. You see, I'm a model, he's a photographer, and occasionally we do a job together. You mean he's... Just a photographer? Oh, I wouldn't call him just a photographer. He's considered pretty good in his line. But he, he makes his living that way. Yeah, sure. When he works. And he never does unless he has to. Well, it's all yours, Kitty. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, and be sure to remind Mr. Powers to attend a meeting of the air raid wardens tonight at 8.30. Yes, girls. We have a call from Mr. Cayley, the photographer. Would you give us his address, please? I'll look it up for you. How do you do, young lady? Would you be kind enough to announce me to Mr. Powers immediately? Hey, Kay, where are you going? Uh, tell him it's about the air raid warden meeting tonight. It's urgent. Oh, yes. Hey, Kate, hold on. What are you going to do? I'm going right over to the magazine and see the real vice president. Oh, you can't do that. Uh, can't I? Oh, be reasonable. You took that picture of my sister, didn't you? What? Well, well, yes, I did, but I That's didn't... That's all I wanted to know, Mr. Hendricks. Oh, look, Kate, look. You want to get set with Powers, don't you? Well, just give me a few minutes and I'll get you set. I wouldn't give you a few seconds. Oh, young man. Yes? Will you go into Mr. Powers' office? Hey, you see? What I tell you? You got nothing to worry about. You just sit right down here for a minute and relax, and I'll handle the whole thing. Uh, a young lady, would you mind sitting right in there for a second, please? That's it. That's fine. Now, let's make it up now that nobody talks to anybody else till I get back, huh? I'll only be a second. Oh, miss, would you buzz me in? Thank you. How do you do, lady? How do you do, Mr. Powers? How do you do, Mr. Montgomery, yes, Jason Montgomery. The S is for Sylvester. Glad to meet you, Mr. Montgomery. Well, what I want to see you about, there's a young lady out Yes, I, I know. My girl told me it's all about the air raid warden meeting tonight. Oh, yes, yes, the air raid warden meeting. Well, it hasn't been called off, I hope. Oh, no, oh, no, it's, it's on. Good, because, frankly, I take the work very seriously. Yes, well, I'm glad to hear that. You see, since the last meeting, there have been some suggestions made by Mr. Uh, 
Uh, let's see, what was his name? Well, I can't think of it now, and you wouldn't care about it anyhow. It... Oh, but I would. I'm very, very interested. You see, I have here the handbook. It's a handbook for air raid wardens. Oh, well, you won't need that anymore. That's the old book. Oh, no, that's all been changed, particularly in Section 184. They've done away with all unnecessary movement. Is that wise? Well, <laughs> they seem to think so. Uh, incidentally, Mr. Powers... As I was coming through your outer office, I noticed some very attractive young ladies out there. There was one in particular. She was about that high. Yes, well, I have seen quite a number of attractive young ladies. Now, tell me about these new regulations. Yes, they're regulations. Well, now, let's see. I uh, guess the best way to get my point over would be a little demonstration. That's it, a demonstration. You won't need these anymore. Now, if you'll watch very closely, I'll show you exactly what I mean. Are you going to start a fire? Well, yes, I was, a small one. Well, couldn't we demonstrate somewhere else? I'd hate to have my carpet burned. Oh, I see what you mean. Why, sure, we'll do any place you say. Well, how about just outside that door, Warden? Well, that'll be all right, Warden. Then we'll come in here and continue our talk later, huh? Well, after you, Warden. Thank you, Warden. Well, now, let's see. I ought to have something. Ah, there's something to do very nicely. Excuse me, young lady, I'd like to borrow this for just a moment, please. Thank you very much. I'll put it right here where we can all see very clearly. It's quite all right, Miss Jensen. Mr. Montgomery's going to demonstrate a new method of fighting incendiary bombs. Oh, say. Say, there's an interesting little item. Do you want to keep that? No, no. Oh, well, all right, sir, the boss. It'll be small fire. Oh, yes. Now, of course, the first thing we have to have is a match. Does anyone have a match? Anyone yes, at all? Oh, thank you very much. Well, now we're all set. You know, I'm a little bit worried, Warden. It's got to be quite safe. Oh, now, come, come, Warden. After all, this is just a demonstration. There's nothing to be alarmed about. Yeah. Now, watch this, girls. It's, it'll be very interesting. There we are. Now it's going nicely. Now, the first thing you do, you take a bucket of sand. Who's got the bucket of sand? Is anyone a bucket of sand? No bucket of sand, huh? Well, <clears throat> we'll make this do in this place. We'll make believe that this is the sand. We pour it right on top of the fire like that. Just, yeah, that's that. Now, you take the hose. Who has the hose? Is anyone the hose here? No sand, no hose? Well, Mr. Powers, I am surprised. Ah, but don't be too ashamed. You don't have to worry about it. We've done away with all that sort of thing. That's the old way. Yes, I, I'm afraid I don't follow you. Oh, but you will, Mr. Powers, you will. Uh, incidentally, as I came up here, I brought a young lady with me who was very attractive. She's quite gorgeous to look at. A think... female fire warden? Well, no, not exactly. <laughs> You're going to think I'm kidding when I tell you this, but she wants to be a Powers model. Everyone wants to be a Powers model. I don't. All right, we'll forget about the models and concentrate on the fire. Oh, yes, the fire. Well, uh... Anytime you see a fire burning like this, naturally, it's got to be put out. Um, about that girl that I spoke to. Now, please, Mr. Montgomery, the fire. The what? The, the fire. fire. Oh, oh, that old thing. <laughs> Say, that smoke bothering you, it's beginning to get me. Uh, let's step in your office where we can talk more comfortably. Yes, but, but what about the fire? Oh, please. Now, after all, you didn't supply any implements. I can't go on with the demonstration. And you've nothing to worry about, believe me. The girls here can take care of it, can't you, girls? The girls, are you sure you can put it out? Oh, yes, Mr. Powers. There you are. You see, you've got nothing to worry about, Mr. Powers. Young lady, get that power extinguisher and put that thing out as fast as you can, will you? Oh, Mr. Powers, now to get back to that girl that we were talking about. You know, the one who wants to become a Powers model? Yes, I understand. No, but you don't understand. I'm not asking you to make her a Powers model. Well, at least you're different. Well, sure. All I want you to do is see her and talk to her and tell her she hasn't got a possible chance of ever becoming a model in a million years. Oh, I see. You don't want her to have a career. That's it, exactly. You want to marry the girl, is that it? Huh? Uh, uh, yes, yes, that's it, Mr. Powers. We had the whole thing all set. She'd ordered a bridal gown, and I'd ordered a new suit. It was nearly half finished. The suit? No, sir, the picket fence. We were going to have the cutest little place in Shelbyville. We had just about decided to paint the whole thing red. The house? Uh, no, sir, the barn. We were going to have our own cows and chickens, of course, and... Gosh, it was really the only quarrel we ever had. She thought it should be painted blue. The barn? Uh, no, sir, the picket fence, and I still thought it should be painted white. Will you stick to one thing? Yes, sir. You see, the boys down the hub department store, that's where she worked. They started the whole thing by putting the idea in her head. Every time they'd see her, they'd say, Wow, by golly, you're pretty enough to be a Powers girl. The hub department store, what do they know about it? Look, Mr. Powers, all I want you to do is see her and tell her she hasn't got a chance. And I know she'd go back to Shelbyville with me and we'd be the happiest kids in the world together. Just the two of us. I'd even consider giving in and having it painted blue just to please her. The house? No, sir, the picket fence. It'll only take you a minute, Mr. Powers, will you? Oh, all right. The next time she's around this way, have a drop in and see me. Oh, gee, thanks, Mr. Powers. You don't know it, but you've made me the happiest guy in the world. Oh, that's all right. Young lady, press that buzzer. I'll be right back. Come on. Hey, you want to see you right away. Excuse me, girl. Well, there she is, Mr. Powers. There's the young lady I was telling you about, Miss Evans, Mr. John Powers. How do you do, Mr. Powers? Is this the white picket fence girl? Well, young lady, during my long and varied career, I've come into contact with girls from every walk of life. 
and they're all filled with the same burning desire to achieve success. Now, in my opinion, the successful woman is the successful wife. No doubt you might think me extremely cruel if I were to ask you to... If I were to ask you to... Uh, would you mind walking up those steps, up there? Would you turn around? Thank you. Now, as I said, to my way of thinking, the hand that rocks the cradle, uh, uh, would you mind? It's all right. Now, as I was saying, uh, do you think she'd be quite happy in Shelbyville? I don't know what you mean. Well, my boy, has it ever occurred to you that you are being extremely selfish and depriving this very talented young woman of a career? Well, as a matter of fact, I've never thought of it exactly that way. Should I have? Definitely. It's not going to be easy, Miss Evans. It's going to be more grind than glitter. It means being always on time and looking your best. It means being prepared to work from one to eight hours under burning lights and in difficult poses. It means watching your diet. It means getting plenty of sleep and exercise. I don't care how much work it takes, Mr. Powers. I'll do it. Just give me the chance. I'll show you. Well, you better think it over a little before you make up your mind. After all, it means giving up Shelbyville and... What's all this about Shelbyville? I... I think you're absolutely right, Powers. I've been very selfish in this whole matter. I've been thinking only of my own pleasure, okay? I'm not going to stand in your way. I wish you all the luck in the world. Warden, be good to her, huh? And don't worry, Warden. Just a minute, Jerry, I... No, stop. Please, don't say anything. Don't move. Just stand there. I want to remember you always, just as you are now. Smiling and happy and full of... Joy. I'm not hurt. Holy smoke! Holy smoke! You know Judge Murphy? Well, he happens to be my cousin. Oh, uh, he is, eh? Good. He'll be glad to see you in court tomorrow morning. Now, oh, wait a minute. You can't take a man out of the Come on, Henry. You're out on bail. All right. All right, if you insist. I'll go quietly. Finish that hand for me, will you, Charles? Thank you. So long, fellas. <laughs> Well, good morning, Sergeant. Fancy meeting you here. Here, sign that. Any place in particular? On the bottom line. Very well. Here's there your you junk. Thank you. I'll keep this box of matches. Hello, Jerry. Hey, how did you know I was down here? Kay told me everything about how you got her into sea powers and how you started the fire and got everybody all wet and got yourself arrested. I suppose she also told you that I was the fellow that put your picture in that magazine. Mm hmm and, and you put up my bail? And you're not angry? No. It's the least I could do. I'm partly responsible for your being here. And anybody who'd start a fire to get a girl a job deserves to be forgiven. Well, what do you know about that? Well... Say, I never met a girl like you before. Hey, mister, tell her outside. I never met anybody like you before. Come on, let's get out of here. This is no place for a guy to get sentimental. Those municipal folding beds kind of knock the crease out of a fella's suit, don't they? <laughs> oh, Jerry. These are marvelous. I didn't know you did this kind of photography. Oh, sure, I have my moments. Sometimes at night when I can't sleep, I get up and go out and shoot stuff like that. I'm kind of a, kind of an erratic character. But here's one over here that I'd like you to see. It's, this is really my baby. Oh, oh, this is a masterpiece. You like it? Oh, it takes my breath away. How'd you get it? Well, it took quite a while to figure it out, but one night I went out and climbed up a fire escape about over here and pointed my camera at it. There it is. You're a genius. I'm a pretty handy guy with a lens. Even though occasionally I do take a picture of a pretty young singing teacher falling in the mud. Look at that thing, isn't that awful? Jerry, if you can take pictures like that, why do you waste your time hanging around country fairs? Well, it's got to eat. 
But there is something I'd really like to do. What? Can you imagine anything more exciting than hanging over the side of a bomber, flying low over enemy territory, photographing the whole thing, maybe even while the battle's actually going on, recording the whole thing right on film? Gee, Jerry, that does sound thrilling. You said it. You see, that's why I had to get your sister in to see Mr. Powers, because if I didn't get that letter of recommendation from the editor, my chances of getting the signal corps would have been cooked. But, Jerry, I'd have given you that release even if you didn't get Kay in to see Mr. Powers. Yeah, I guess you would at that. You know, you're a pretty swell gal, Ellen. Well, everything's all set. Nobody's hurt but you. I'm not hurt. Sure you are. That silly picture cost you your job, didn't it? And my conscience, such as it is, still tells me that I have a kind of a personal responsibility. Want to make me a Powers model? <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm all out of matches. <laughs> Jerry, really, don't worry about me. I'll be all right. Well, you are all right. I, I think you're wonderful. Jerry, you're sweet. My mother says that, too. But then she's prejudiced. I'm not prejudiced. What's the matter with you? Looks like you've been hit by a street car. It wouldn't have mattered. Nothing would have mattered. It was such a lovely day today. Everybody was so lovely today. Did you ever realize what a man can do on a fire escape? There he was, hanging on the side of a building like a pretty butterfly, risking his life to photograph a masterpiece for posterity. Oh, isn't it simply wonderful? What's the wonder? Everything. Men and butterflies and fire escapes and men. You've been out in the sun too long. Yes, I have. And it's wonderful being out in the sun. Now, here's something to really get excited about. Tomorrow I start training in the power school for modeling. Let me know when you come to. just stepped out of a shower, scrubbed clean, fresh and starry-eyed. Ah, oh, when you talk that way, Charlie, you got me. Wait, Jerry, these are marvelous. Yeah, they turn out pretty well. Oh, I don't know how to thank you. Well, you don't have to thank me. Thank Ellen, it was her idea. Oh, I know it was, darling, but I insist on thanking you also. And in my own way. Hey, now what am I supposed to do? Oh, just stand there completely stunned. I am. What about Ellen? Oh, Ellen, well, you aren't worried about her, are you? No, not particularly, but I'm kind of worried about you. Me? Well, darling, I can take care of myself very nicely. But it's, it's 
nice of you to want to worry about me. Jerry. Huh? Take me in your arms. Hold me close. Very close. Darling, we were meant for each other. I didn't know it until today. For the first time in my life, I, I feel a funny feeling shooting all through me. Well, uh, maybe you left your motor running. You don't think I have a heart, do you? Oh, now, Kay, look, why lay yourself open with a crack like that? Well, didn't you enjoy kissing me? Well, sure, in sort of a sisterly way. Oh. Well, I, I ought to have my head examined for even bothering with you, you... You... You chump! Say, maybe I was a chump. Kay Evans like we were launching a destroyer. Okay, Jerry. When do we get the champagne bottle? Yeah, and where do we hit her with it? Uh, you hit her right on the bow, just under the nameplate. You know the spot. <laughs> Hiya, kids. Glad to see you. Having a good time? At these prices, we should be hilarious. That's what I say. Well, I'm happy to see you having so much fun. This is my boyfriend, Harry. Glad to see you, Harry. Likewise. This is my boyfriend, Harry. Glad to see you, Harry. Likewise. Well, I gotta be hopping along, kids. Along, so Googie, along, so Nancy, along, so Harry, along, so Harry. I gotta hurry. He was in a hurry, wasn't he, Harry? Girls, here's some flowers for someone. I can't make out the name, but they're from Daddy. Oh, oh that's that's my name. That's for me. Oh, oh they're not from Daddy. That's from my father. Oh, you might have known it. Oh, Ellen, I'll never be ready. Oh, now, calm down, Kay. Take it easy. You've got nothing to worry about. You look ravishing. I better get out of here. Jerry and I'll be waiting for you right after the show. Good luck, honey. Bye. Well, girls. This is the big night, the one that you've all been waiting for. In a few minutes, you will meet your future employers. So go out there and just be your own sweet, lovely, beautiful selves. And, well, I hope this is the beginning of a long and successful career for each one of you. Thank you. Good night. We'll do our best. Kelly, I'm so nervous. You're nervous. I'm shaking like a clothesline in a Kansas cyclone. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll break the tension a little bit. I'll take you on a little tour of the room. Now, let's see where we start. Oh, yeah. See the gray-haired fellow over there? Let's lamps and the cosmetic king. He's what they call around town a fox. What's a fox? A fox is a wolf that sends flowers. I thought you were reporting for me. That's silly. Oh, Jerry, aren't you ever serious? Not if I can help myself. Except, of course, if I happen to be with you. Each year, hundreds of applicants gather from the four corners of the world to storm the portals of John Powers. Many return to the oblivion from which they came, while others stay on to become Powers girls. I'd like you to meet eight of the most successful of the 1943 crop. Miss Barbara Slater. Miss Patricia May. Miss Jane Hatter. Miss Eloise Hart. Miss Lillian Eggers. Miss Rosemary Coleman. Miss Linda Sterling. Miss Evelyn 
surprise. a connoisseur of lovely feminine grace. I prided myself on the fact I could take or leave a beautiful face. In my own field I was fine. Oh, but angels are out of my life. You're out of this world.
Hiya, pal. Hey, Dennis. Oh, Dennis, you, you were terrific. Great. You oh, just kill the people. Thank you. Say, is the surprise party still on yet? Oh, yes, and that reminds me. I'd better get started. I've loads of preparing to do. Uh, Dennis, have you finished here yet? Yeah, I'm all finished. Oh, fine. Then you come with me. I'll need all the help I can get. Well, okay, let's fine. all go. No, darling, you stay here and bring Kay home. And remember now, don't tell her a thing. No, I won't say a word to her. See you later. You bet, sweetie. So long. So long, Charlie. You were wonderful. Oh, no. Oh, by the way, I'm giving a cocktail party tomorrow. Excuse me, I'd... excuse me, excuse me. Jay. Oh, Jay. Come here, I've got to talk to you. My golly, you were lovely. You were swell. You know, there might have been other girls up there, but nobody saw them. Jay, I'm so grateful to you. That's oh, fine. Oh. Hey, wait a minute. You don't want a picture of me, fellas. There's the destroyer and get plenty of them. I'm going to spray the country with the pictures of Kay Evans. Let's see the smile now. All right, party. Well, but I borrow that, I think I'm cut. That's oh, that's good. Hey, I... Oh, John. You know the boys. Draw. Oh, yeah, boy. Hiya, Hello. Hello. I want to congratulate you. When it comes to beautiful women, you certainly can dig them up. Yes, we've got a pretty good crop this year. How's your wife? Oh, she's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Send the negatives over the office in the morning, will you? Uh, okay, okay, boss. Thank you very much. Well, are you happy now, dear? I'm bubbling over. And how about you? Are you proud of her? Warden? Oh, gee, Mr. Pars, I'm sorry about that fire thing, but... There's the result. That's what counts, isn't it? Well, this is a little better than that white picket fence in Shelby. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. It wasn't the picket fence. It was white. It was that other thing, the... Uh... The barn? No, I think it was the house. Wasn't oh, now, now, wait a minute. Don't <laughs> just stop that again. I nearly had him going again. Well, enjoy yourself tonight, dear. You. And you too, Firebug. Thanks very much, Mr. Powers. Good Say, night. you know, for a fellow with an office as big as he has, he's not a bad character. Pretty nice guy. Well, come on, get your coat. We're gonna go. Oh, no, Jerry. I can't leave now. Why not? I've been invited to join Donald Lamps' party. But tonight's family night, you know, Alan, and you and me oh, and Jerry, Janice. Oh, Jerry, I can't refuse Lamson. He can do me a lot of good. I might even land his cosmetic contract. Well, why don't you land it tomorrow? Oh, no, no, Jerry. Contacts are everything in this Yeah, business. but I'm afraid of when you make them a nightclub. Sometimes no, they forget. No, but he's much too important to ignore. Look, I tell you, you come over to the table with me, and then I'll have an excuse to leave early. Besides, uh, I don't want to be left alone with him. Well... Oh, please. Well, all right, but only for a couple of minutes, because Ellen's waiting. Okay. Ah, the goddess of the evening. <laughs> Mr. Lamson, I... That Donald to you, my love. Oh, all right, then. Donald it is. But I want all of you to know the man who deserves the credit for my success tonight, Mr. Jerry Hendricks. Splendid, splendid. I'm glad to know you. Won't Likewise. you sit down? You too. <laughs> You're among friends. We're all set to pay due homage to beauty. A toast and a tribute to Miss Kay Evans. <clears throat> oh, pardon me, pardon me. My friends are without refreshments. Allow me. And now, to you, my dear. Thank you. Hey, take it easy, kids. I want that table to look nice when Kay and Jerry get here. You're gonna wear that door out looking for them, Ellen. Take it easy, she said. What for? They're not coming. Why, of course they are. They know we're waiting. Oh, sure, but it doesn't seem to bother them. They should have been here hours ago. Not that I care. I'm having a swell time. Yippee! Yippee. That's what I say. Yippee! Yeah, and you're both putting on plenty of weight, too. I think it's very mean for Kay to treat you like this, Ellen. Oh, I'm sure it isn't Kay's fault. And after all, this is her big night. Just what are you hinting at? I'm not hinting. Now, look here, Googie. Ah, oh, don't get yourself in a lather defending Kay. Nancy and I know that sister of yours better than you do. We lived with her a long time, and we know how that baby operates. That's what I say. Why, oh, don't pay any attention to the melon. They're just jealous of Kay's success, that's all. Here, have some ham, have some cheese. Fill your big mouth. Look, Ellen, I like you. That's why I'm saying these things. You're sweet, but you don't give a guy high blood pressure. Well, who wants high blood pressure? Guy. That's what I say. I don't know what you're talking about. Look, you're the type men look up to. She's the type they look up. Well, I'll bet right now Kay and Jerry are seated in some smart... Be quiet. Come on, Ellen. Let's dance. No, I... I know. Dennis, why don't you sing something? Come on, let's have a little fun around here. No, I could do without. That's what I say. That's what I say. That's what I say. Stop saying that. It annoys me. Come on, honey. Please sing. But I didn't bring any music with me. What's the matter with the radio music? Well, maybe they don't know any of my numbers. Ask them. Hey, fellas, do you know that they... Oh, what's the matter with you? Go on, sing anything. We won't listen. That's what I say. Come on, honey. Now take a big, deep breath and give out. Oh my. 
my dream can never come true. You love her, she loves you, I love you too. For three dreams are one too many, so my dream can never come true. I'm hoping that you would love me was on the armor that left me in the middle of this crazy little three-cornered dream. You're happy, she's happy. feel the way you do, why don't you call Jerry's apartment, and when Kay answers the phone, then you What would know... Kay be doing in Jerry's apartment? You tell me. I think you'd better be going, Googie. That's what I say. Besides, it's getting late, and I'm stuffed to the ears. Come on, Googie. Thanks for the beer and stuff, Ellen. Good night. Good night. Hey, Ellen, how about you and I going out someplace and having some fun, huh? Oh, Dennis, you don't want to go out any more than I do. Yeah, I guess you're right. Besides, I gotta get up early tomorrow morning. I'm gonna shoot the sunrise over the Hudson with the new lens I bought from Jerry. So I guess I better say goodnight, too, huh? Well, goodnight, Ellen. Good night, Dennis. I sure enjoy the music. You know, you're the kind of a girl I've been looking for all my life. Am I? Of course. You know, you're going to be the Lamson Cosmetic Girl. Am I? Now, what do you think of that? Well, that's wonderful, Mr. Lamson. The name is Donald. <laughs> you know something, Charlie? You work me. Come on, Kay. Come on, it's late. We gotta go. But, Jerry, I'm gonna be the Lamson Cosmetic Girl. Yeah, I gathered that the way this guy was operating. Well, you have to have a drink to that. Uh huh? One little drink. Well, if you insist, but I'm warning you, this is the one that I shouldn't take. <laughs> uh, to me, huh? Yeah, okay, to me. To you. I mean, to you, whatever he said. Scratch in this, would you? Ha, 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 Hello! Here, you take care of him. I'll get the phone. Hello! Come on, take this. Hello? Huh?
Ellen, get up from there. Come on, wake up. Oh, Ellen, get up. My gosh. Oh. Oh, what happened? Well, you were screaming the house down. I was. I guess I was dreaming. You must have had a nightmare. Where were you? Oh, I'm sorry we didn't get to your party, darling, but Jerry and I got tied up with a lot of big shots. Well, you know how it is. Yes, I know how it is. Jerry's a dear. We had loads of fun. Why don't you leave him alone? You don't care about him. You don't care about anybody but yourself. Why, Ellen, don't. I've always played second fiddle to you. Let you dominate me. Let you have your way about everything. Well, this time it's going to be different. Oh, really? Yes, really. People don't mean anything to you unless you can use them. Well, you're not going to use Jerry because I'm not going to let you. Listen, I happen to think Jerry is pretty nice. And uh, he doesn't seem to find me boring. You had your chance and the fact that you couldn't hold him is your blues. I'm not going to let you take him away from me. Careful, sister mine. You might get hurt. I might give you the same warning. Hmm, sounds like a challenge. Main Street versus Broadway. Okay, I'll take it. Now, good night. Who is it? Tell him I'm not here. Go on back to bed. It's too early. Jerry! All right, all right. I'm coming. Don't get excited. I don't know what a fella does. He can never seem to get a full night's sleep. Now, hurry up! You plan I'm hurrying. I'm hurrying. You plan and plan and plan and something always happens. Right in the middle of it. Just when you're going good. Wait a minute, will you, Maggie? I'm coming. You ought to be ashamed of yourself going around here waking people up like this in the middle of the night. You'll get used to waking up early. This is what I think it is. Huh? The War Department. This is it. Maggie, the War Department. Well, what are you shaking for? Are you afraid they want you? No, I'm afraid they don't. Here, Maggie, you open it and read it to me. You've got a stronger constitution than I have. Well, quit shaking. What are you going to do when you're getting them bombers and taking them pictures? Maggie, please don't talk, will you? Just read it. If it's bad news, I mean, if they've turned me down, break it to me gently. Give me some kind of a signal. Whistle or something. Oh, I can't whistle. Well, how do you collect your rent? Well, I don't. Say, that reminds me. Now, Maggie, me. don't change the subject at a time like this. What can you do? Well, I can yodel. Well, that'll do fine, honey. That'll do fine. Just read it. And if it's bad news, yodel and scram out of here and leave me alone with my misery. Well, suppose it's good news. Then whack me. Well, I'd be glad to. Oh, 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 I'm in. They took me. Oh, wonderful, Maggie. I made it. I made oh, it. Oh, Dad. Oh, this is I'm great. Right, oh, you're sweet. You're wonderful. Mm, you're the queen of the maid. Let me see what it says. Let me see. There's someone, 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 someone. Hey, wait a minute. They want me at 6 o'clock in the morning. I can't be there that early. If Uncle Sam wants you at 6 o'clock in the morning, you'll be there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Let's see. I got a lot of things to do. Got to say goodbye to my folks. Got to say goodbye to Ellen. Got to get a new uniform. And you got to hurry. Yes, I got to do that, too. Maggie, come on. Get out of here. I got to get dressed. Now, look, if anybody calls up, I'm going up to Poughkeepsie to say goodbye to my folks. I'll be back tonight. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Say, BG, I've been trying to get a hold of Ellen ever since Jerry left, and she wasn't in, but I gave the message to Kay and told her about the party tonight. Well, you better keep trying, because Jerry said to especially get a hold of Ellen. Oh, don't worry, BG, I'll keep after her. Well, let me see now. That'll be Jerry, his mother and father, Kay, Ellen... You and me, and uh, you get a hold of the rest of them. Oh, yeah, sure. Gee, you know, BG, I think it's swell that you and I should be giving Jerry this going away party. But remember, I want to divide the bill equally. Okay, you pay 60 and I'll pay 40. Oh, that's fine. Well, give me some meat. Oh, skip it. I'm on a diet. No, that, that isn't exactly what I had in mind. But, miss, this dress originally cost $275, and the rental fee is only $10. Well, that isn't the point. I want to look glamorous tonight. There. Now, that's what I want. But, miss, you're not the type to wear this kind of dress. I intend to be the type. I'll take this and, and that silver fox cape. Could I have them immediately? Well, you'd have to have the dress altered. I'll, I'll come back and get it later. You see, now that I've rented the clothes, I'm on my way to rent a man to go with them. Rent a man to go with them? What?
couple of packs, please. Thank you, sir. And this is what uh, Mr. Goodman gave Jerry. Oh, that's lovely. Well, Pop, you don't have to worry about Mom. She'll never be a jitterbug. <laughs> <laughs> never mind. When I was your age, we did the same dance. Only we called it the hop, skip, and jump. It made more sense then. Congratulations, <laughs> Mrs. Hendricks. Gee, it was a pleasure to watch somebody who dances like you do. I don't know how to take that. Well, I think he meant it as a compliment, Mom, but then he didn't have to dance with you. <laughs> Go along with you. You're just like your father. There it is again. I don't open my mouth and I get balled out. <laughs> oh, don't you pay any attention to him, Mrs. Hendricks. I think you danced divinely. Don't you think so, Dennis? Yeah, I think so. Oh, come on, Jerry, it's our dance. Well, uh, oh, excuse me, Mom. She's the big surprise. Jerry said he was going to spring on us tonight. I wonder what's keeping Ellen. Oh, she'll be along. Uh, Jerry, you know what? While you're away, I don't want you to worry about your family, so I'm going to run up to Poughkeepsie and keep him company. Oh, gee, that'll be swell. Oh, I love doing it. You know, deep down, I'm really very small townish. Few people know that side of me, though. That's so. Mm -hmm. That's love. Oh, I want you to listen to this song. I requested it especially for us. Oh, the lady who didn't believe in love is weeping. The crocodile tears are falling from her blue eyes. Did she hurt her pretty finger? Or do her eyes just smile? Dumb a little and broke her heart. Oh, the lady who didn't believe in love's not talking. She simply won't tell a soul what the trouble is. But when a lady won't talk and the lady's in tears, you know what she's thinking of. The lady who didn't believe in love's in love. I'm like the girl in that song. I didn't know that. Congratulations. I hope you'll be very happy. Hey, there comes Ellen now. Now remember, we're madly in love with each other. We've got to make him jealous. I'll do my best, Miss Ellen. No. You must call me Ellen. Ellen? Yes. Ellen. You certainly look the part. Good evening. Good evening. You're Mr. Uh... Uh, Vandy Vandegrift. Oh, yes, of course, Mr. Vandegrift. You've been a stranger, Mr. Vandegrift. Oh, I've been quite busy. Uh, maybe we have a table. Yes, yes, of course. Right this way, please. I thought you told me you'd never been here before. I haven't. Oh, many people think to know me. That's because I've been on so many billboards. You see, I am the original brushless shave man. Hey, Ellen. Oh, oh, Jerry. Oh, Vandy, darling. This is Mr. Hendricks, an old friend of mine. Hello. And uh, this is my sister, my eldest sister, Kay. How do you do? Perfectly delighted. <laughs> well, where have you been? We've been waiting for you. Come on, I want you to meet my folks. Hey, Mom and Pop, this is my mom, this is my Pop, this is Ellen Evans. How do you do, Mrs. Hendricks, Hi. Mr. Hendricks? How do you do? Oh, uh, this is Mr. Vandy Vandegrift. How do you do? Well, uh, Ellen, you sit right down here and your friend can sit over there someplace. Oh, oh I'm sorry, Jerry, but uh, Vandy and I... Uh, thanks, awfully. Uh, a, a bit later, perhaps, eh? <laughs> um, shall we go, my dear? Oh, yes, Vandy, darling. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't get it. Vandy Vandergrift. I've seen that face somewhere before. So have I. I'm sure I've seen these pictures in magazines or society columns. I've seen them, but I just can't place them. I know where I'd like to place them. Excuse me a minute. Uh, Ellen. Look, I know you're angry about last night, but I want to explain to you what Jerry, happened. Jerry, isn't that all water under the bridge? You couldn't get to the party, and that's all there is to it. But that isn't all there is to it. I want to tell you what happened. Jerry, 
I'm not the least bit interested. And please don't shout. Well, who's shouting? I'm not shouting. I'm just trying to tell you oh, the game. really, this is all so unnecessary. Vandy, my darling, you wanted to dance. Yes, of course. Listen, Mr. Goodman and I have rehearsed a surprise for Jerry. It's all like we start, you stand up. Huh? Sure. Now, wait a minute, Ellen. You've got to let me explain. I... Really, old man, there is no need of your making a scene. Miss Evans, obviously, it's not interesting what you have to say. Look, brother, let me give you a tip, will you? You look tired. Why don't you just sit down and rest while I talk to the young lady? Ellen, honest, it wasn't my... Oh, man, you're annoying Miss Evans. I'm annoying Miss Evans, so... I'll... I'm not annoying Miss... Listen, I'll annoy anybody I please. See, Miss Evans or anybody else, including you. Now, you keep out of this. Ellen, I was sitting there, and they gave me a... I guess you don't understand. The fact is, you are not wanted here, and I must ask you to leave. Oh, you want me to leave, huh? Well, let me tell you something, my friend. If we weren't in a place if like... If you feel that way, we can go somewhere else. I'll be happy to oblige. You'll be happy? Ho, ho, ho! Well, I'm hysterical. What's more, I know just the place right over there where the red light is. Come on, let's go. Excuse me. Uh, I'll be right back. He'll be right back. Oh, Jerry, stop being so silly. You're acting like a child. Don't you worry your pretty little head. I'll mail this guy home for you. Come on, chum. Now, get ready. Don't forget to stand up. We won't. Oh, Mrs. Hendricks, uh, do you mind if I speak to my sister a minute? Not at all. Go ahead. Thank you. All right, PG, let's do it. Okay, boys, this is it. Should all acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should all... Oh, he's gone. Well, I guess we'll have to wait. <laughs> Come on, put him up. Remember telling me that it was just as easy to love a rich man as it was a poor one? Well, you weren't quite right. It's so much easier. You sure learn fast. I always was an apt pupil. Oh, and darling, you must feel free to visit us at any time. Whether it's our place in Palm Beach, or our ranch in New Mexico, or our home on Long Island, or uh, even our townhouse on Park Avenue. Don't tell me he doesn't have a hunting lodge in Connecticut. Uh, no, dear. It's in North Carolina. Everything all right, Bandy, dear? Nothing to worry about, my dear. Not a thing. I, I hope I'm not intruding. I'm so glad to have you join us. Oh, thank you. I, I was just telling my sister what a lucky girl she is. She isn't to be congratulated. I'm the one. <laughs> uh, pardon me. Would you mind stepping outside again? Oh, not at all. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> now get ready, don't forget to stand up. We won't. Here, PG, let's do it. Solid, boys, this is it. Sure. again. Put him up. Oh! Oh! Oh, dear. Oh. And besides, I'm not allergic to furs or cars or, uh, jewelry. Terribly sorry. How is he? Uh, don't you worry about my dear. I doubt whether he'll disturb us anymore. Uh, Bandy, my sister's been telling me about your hunting lodge in North Carolina. I wish you'd show it to me sometime. Oh, oh my dear, I can think of nothing more delightful. Uh, Ellen and I would love to have you visit us. Uh, pardon me, would you mind stepping out just once more? Um, pardon me, pardon me. <laughs> well, I bet we make it this time. He's here again, VG. Let's go, huh? Well, I hope you're right this time. Okay, boys, once more. Should all the acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should all the acquaintance... <laughs> Come on, put him up.
you ought to love Poughkeepsie. It will be so different from anything you've known for so long. I hope you didn't hurt him. I must say he's very persistent. Uh, just who is this fellow? He's the best photographer in New York, and he'll be the best in the Army. He's in the Army? Yes, he leaves in the morning. He's the second lieutenant in the 634th Company of the Signal Corps. A lieutenant in the 634th Company? 634th? Oh! Oh, brother! Did I say something wrong? If you didn't, it would be a novelty. And I must say, you've done a fine job of ignoring Jerry's parents. Lieutenant! Lieutenant! Oh, speak to me, sir. Please, sir. Speak to me. Oh, I'll never forgive myself for this, Lieutenant. Oh, why this has ever happened to, happen to me? Tomorrow, quick! You should be very proud of your son. He's a wonderful man. We think so, Miss Evans. I guess you feel pretty badly about losing him. Naturally, but those are things parents must expect. And I guess you'll feel just as badly about losing your sister. Losing my sister? Oh, I guess there's no need of us keeping a surprise from each other. Surprise? Yeah, surprise. Your sister and Jerry. As if you didn't know they're going to be married. Kay and Jerry. Excuse me, please. Well, what did I do now? Well, what did you force me to do, Lieutenant? What will you think of me, sir? Oh, please. Oh. 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 Take his legs, Joe. Be careful with it. Hey, that ain't a man. There's the one needs you. Come on. Take it easy now. Watch your step. There you are. We'll be back to you in a minute. yourself together, sir, oh, please. No. Oh, oh, what happened? I oh. hit you, sir. Oh, oh, it's you again, huh? Yes. Well, come on, put him up. Oh, oh, no, 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 sir. I, I can't tell you how sorry I am, sir. What's all this sir business about? Oh, nothing, only that since you're a lieutenant, I am. How did you know I was a lieutenant? Miss Evans told me, and to make matters worse, sir, I'm leaving tomorrow to become a private in your company. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What I want to know is what's going on between you and Ellen Evans? Oh, nothing, sir, absolutely nothing. She was merely using me tonight to make you jealous. Jealous? Yes, sir. Ellen is desperately in love with you, sir. Huh? Uh, would you say that again? She's in love with you, sir. Uh, you heard what he said. She's in love with... Whoa! 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 You want to hold it again? No, 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 no. Perry, Perry! Oh, there you are. I've got a surprise for you, and you're going to get it. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to... Oh, you're not Jerry. Oh, Mom, Bob, congratulate me. I'm the happiest guy in the world. The happiest guy in the world. Happy. What's all this about? This is about a couple of people with a couple of hearts that are going to get coupled. Something you wouldn't understand. What happened, Ellen? Where did she go? We don't know. She just left here all upset. She left here all upset. Oh, oh, wait a minute. I got to find her. Then in the presence of these witnesses, and by virtue of the authority vested in me, <clears throat> by the laws of this state, I now pronounce you husband and wife. I wish you much happiness. Oh, thank you. And congratulations. Congratulations to you, thank too. You. Thanks. Thank you. Well, come on, we've got to hurry. Hey, Sonny, send me one of those pictures, will you? Yeah, sure. Wait a minute, I want to get a picture. Thanks. And thanks for the camera, Lieutenant. Well, that's all right. Well, goodbye, sweetheart. Goodbye. Well, yeah, I gotta hurry. You know, the army and oh, that... this is an awful way to spend a honeymoon. Well, gee, honey, I'm sorry, but it's not my fault. I guess it'll just have to wait till I get my first leave. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Step on it, Sandy. Take good care of it, Charlie. Oh, don't worry. Goodbye, I want honey. It,